So once you've clicked on the link for the titration, you're going to click on the top option here, find the concentration of an acetic acid solution. And so now you are faced with a, a summary sheet telling you what your uh, objective in this exercise is. You're going to be titrating a 25 milliliter solution of acetic acid, a weak acid, that is your analyte, uh, by using sodium hydroxide, a strong base, as the titrant. And here's your balanced equation. The instructions that you're going to follow are listed here. All right, and I'm going to demonstrate um, by going through these steps, showing you how to interact with the simulation. So when you're ready, you're going to click on the arrow in the upper right corner here. All right, so in this window you have, this is where your pH curve will be graphed uh, as you complete the simulated titration. Here's your burette um, and the analyte below it. Here you have where your um, titrant added will be tabulated along with the corresponding pH at that time. And then over here in this area is where you can change some of those settings indicated in the instructions. In the blue area here, it says to enter the concentration of sodium hydroxide used in this titration. And so we're going to change that to 1.0 molar. Um, pretty standard concentration to use. Uh, you can only set this at the beginning of the titration. Once you've set this and started, you cannot change this. The next thing you need to set is the amount of NaOH, the volume that will be added each time you click on the burette. Uh, and that's referred to as an aliquot. All right, you may have seen that term in the instructions. And so initially for the first um, titration, we're going to set that to a pretty high number, about five milliliters at a time, because we just want to get a rough idea of where the endpoint is at. And then we can rerun the titration, make it a smaller aliquot size, and get better resolution. So I've set my uh, titrant to one molar. I'm going to add it in five milliliter increments. So to add it, I click on the burette, and it looks like we've already hit that endpoint very rapidly. So that's telling us that. Um, when we rerun this, okay, we're going to want to choose right from the get-go a much smaller aliquot value. So we're going to go ahead and reset. We're going to rerun with the same unknown. All right, make sure that after you've done your fast titration, rerun with the same unknown concentration. So we're going to change this to one molar again, but this time we're going to do one milliliter increments. And you could go smaller if you wanted to. Being that close to the beginning, maybe you want to go with a half milliliter. So we're going to add one milliliter at a time. And there we see the big jump. And now we'll continue to add to get to the top. And we'll hold it down. And that'll finish out the graph. Okay, just so we've maxed out the 50 milliliters. That's not so much essential. This part right here is the key part. Okay, so when it comes now time to calculate your titration calculation, the volume of NaOH, that first step where you need the volume times the concentration, the volume is going to be, we're going to scroll down in our data, and we're going to look for that big pH jump. Okay, so right here between 8 milliliters and 9 milliliters is where we go from 5.74 acidic to 11.7 basic. So in that milliliter, is where that jump, you know, where that, that equivalency was reached and the pH 7 neutral uh, was hit upon. So um, that's a spread of about six units. And so halfway would be about a pH of eight, which is going to be very close to our endpoint there. So we'll go ahead and take the average of those two. So we would use 8.5 milliliters for the um, volume of sodium hydroxide that was added. And so we'll use that times the concentration in the first step, then use that moles of NaOH to get the, uh, at, with the mole ratio from the balanced equation, which is just one to one, to get the moles of hydrochloric acid. And then we will divide that moles of hydrochloric acid, or I'm sorry, acetic acid, acetic acid, excuse me, by the volume of the analyte that we had, which was 25 milliliters. Once you've calculated what the concentration of the unknown acid is, or the unknown concentration of the acetic acid, you're going to put that answer here in the red section, 
And I went ahead and crunched those numbers and came back with it should come out to 0.34 molar. And so when you've put your answer in and you're ready to check it, you're going to click on this yellow button, turn in lab report. And if you're correct, it's going to give you a little star, a little check mark, and a, and a good job. If not, uh, it will give you, um, let's just say, and, and so I'm going to rerun. I'm going to put in a different concentration. I'm going to say put in 0 0.20. Okay. And so it gives you the X and it tells you um, what the actual concentration is and, and where, um, approximately where that endpoint uh, was going to be. Okay. Um, and again, you see that the number that we put in 0.34 was not the same as this one. So there is going to be a little bit of leeway there. Um, but you know, there's, there's an acceptable range and 0.34 was it within that acceptable range. Okay. So if you want to try it again, you can always rerun with the same unknown concentration, but if you want to test yourself and, and do a different concentration, it's the same equation, but a different concentration, you can restart with a new unknown. And that way you get a fresh problem and, and you can give yourself basically unlimited practice uh, with doing titration calculations.